Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Right now, we are in the process of solving the problems having to do with ratios and proportions. Ratios and proportions, and we are on page number 28. We are about to start, we are about to begin the sample problems that you see there on page number 28. The sample problems. After having done these sample problems, there are 10 of them there, and we did the five examples on the previous two pages. After having done these sample problems, 10 of them, if you feel that you need more practice and you want to work on some more problems if, to strengthen your understanding of the concept, you will find some more problems on the concept. If you watch these two videos, T is Math Day 33 and T is Math Day 34. As we have talked about before, as we have pointed out several times in the past, the T's and the math that you will encounter on the HESI's is very similar, it's very comparable to what you will see on the T's. And therefore, if you need more help, the, the videos are there. T series has 80 videos. This HESI series that we're working on right now, today's our lesson number 39. Altogether, I think there's going to be about 50 videos, but they're all there. In addition to that, you see here Basic Math, day 51 through 65, in the series of Basic Math from 51 through 65, those 15 days, those 15 lessons, is where we dealt with the con concept of the notion of percentages, decimals, and fractions. Percentages, decimals, and fractions, how to convert one from the other, back and forth. Anyway, let's get going. Number one, it says change the fraction, nine, it says change the following fractions to ratio. Changed fractions to ratio. And the first one they give us is 22 over 91. 22 over 91. Before we can express this as a ratio, for example, let me give you a simple example. For example, if the if the, if the given, if fraction is given to us like this, and they ask us to convert this fraction to a ratio, before we do anything at all, we have to ask ourselves, can we reduce this thing? Can we can this fraction be reduced? The answer is yes. We can divide top and bottom by five, five becomes one and ten becomes two. So if, if they ask us, if somebody asks us to express this fraction, this fraction five over ten as a ratio, we must say that the ratio is one to two. Ratio is one to two. The question is, what is the common factor we can find between twenty-two and ninety-one? Between twenty-two and 91. Can you find any common factor at all between 22 and 91? 22 you must understand, 22 we must understand is simply 2 times 11. So those are the two factors of 22. What are the factors of 91? Can you, can you tell me what are the factors of 91? In other words, is 91 divisible by 2? The answer is no, it is not divisible by 2 because it doesn't have an even digit. Is it divisible by 3? 91 is not divisible by 3 because some of the digits of 91 the sum of the digits is going to be 9 plus 1, which is 10, and the sum of the digits is not divisible by 3, therefore it is not going to be divisible by 3. Is it divisible by 4? Is it divisible by 5, 6, 7? You have to go through all of those. And they are all there in the series of basic math. I'm not going to redo the whole thing. 91, it turns out, is a prime number. It is a prime number. There are no common factors between 91 and any other numbers on the planet because it's a prime number unless the number happens to be a multiple of 91. 22 obviously is not a multiple of 91. If you want to learn your prime numbers, if you, if you want to learn how to recognize your prime numbers, I'm going to give you the videos where you can watch prime numbers 1 through 50 we learn on day number 19 and 51 through 100 On day number 20, we learn our 19 and 20, we learn our prime numbers in the series of basic math. Just type in basic math, day 19, and then the basic math, day 20, and you learn your prime numbers there, and you'll be able to recognize right away that 91 is a prime number. 
there, there are no common factors between 22 and 91. There are no common factors between 22 and 91. Therefore, if somebody asks us to express this fraction as a ratio, as a ratio, you simply say it is 22 to 91. And that's all we can do. That's all you can do. There is nothing else we can, there is nothing else to do there. Or you can write this as, or it can be written as 22 to 91. We learned this yesterday. We learned that yesterday, three different ways of expressing a ratio, a given ratio can be expressed in three different ways. We learned it yesterday. If you have not watched yesterday's video, make sure you watch it, day number 38. Make sure you go in this, sequ in, in this series in a proper sequence because things build on each other. Do you understand? Let's go to number two. Enough of the talk. Number two. Again, they are asking us to express this fraction 19 over 40 as a ratio. 19 is a prime number. 19 is a prime number. How do we know it? How do we know that 19 is a prime number? The answer is very simple, very straightforward. How do you know that 19 is a prime number? Because you just do. You have to be able to recognize your prime numbers. There is a method to it and you will learn the method as to how to recognize the prime numbers when you watch day number 19. You have to ask yourself, is it divisible by 2, is it divisible by 3, 4, 5? So you have to go through the series halfway through. Halfway through for 19 is all the way up to 9. Do you understand? Anyway, 19 is a prime number, and since it's a prime number, there are, there are, there are not going to be any common factors between 19 and 40, because 40 is not a multiple of 19. So, it's just, you can write this as 19 to 40. This is one way you can express this, or you can express this as 19 to 40. 19 to 40. That's how it's read with two dots in there. Number 3. Asking us to solve for x. Let's solve for x then. My dream come true because ever since I was a little boy, I have been wanting to solve for x. Many a times I came across y, but x is what I wanted. Here we go. 7 to 5 is to 91 to x. Again, we did, we did these problems yesterday also. We learned how to read this thing. It is to be read as, this, this statement is to be read as 7 to 5 is to, is to, that's how it's read, is to, this part right here is is to, 91 to x. Now what does it mean? It simply means 7 to 5, it simply means 7 over 5 is a fraction. Is to, is to means equals, and 91 to x is 91 over x. 91 over x. That's all it is. That's all there is. What can we do next? Well, easiest, simplest, quickest way is to ask yourself how can I make this top number on this side the same as the top number on the, on the other side. On the other side we have 91. Here we have 7. How many 7 does 91 have? Is 91 a multiple of 7? Is 91 a multiple of 7? Or is 91 a prime number? Bloody hell, 91 is not a prime number. I made a mistake. In question number one, I made a claim that 91 is a prime number. It bloody well is not a prime number. 22, 22 is made up of 2 times 11. And 91 actually is a multiple of 7. See, here, 91. How many, how many 7s does 91 have? Uh, how many 7s does 9 have? How many 7s does 9 have? 9 has 1 7. 9 has 1 7. The remaining 2 goes and joins the remaining 2 goes and joins the 1 and becomes 21. And 21 has 3 7s. So it turns out 91 is simply 13 times 7. 13 times 7. So the, the fact does not, it does not alter the fact that the answer of course is 22 to 91. It is to be written as 22 to 91 or 22 to 91. I'm redoing question number 1. That part does not change. The part that I that uh, that I said wrong is the claim that we made. And yes, I'm in, I'm including in it by using the plural pronoun. The claim that we made uh, because we are partners in crime. 
the claim that we made was that the 91 is a prime number, is bloody well is not prime number. But it doesn't alter the fact that they have no common factors, 22 and 91, they do not have any common factor, therefore the only way we can express this as a ratio is, is like this, either written, either written in this form, 22 to 91, or written in this form, 22 to 91. That's how it's read, 22 to 91. These two dots here, we read this as 2, 22 to 91. But it is not a prime number, as you can clearly see, 91 is 13 times 7. Here we have a 7. If we can multiply the 7 by 13, 13 times 7 we just learned, 13 times 7 we just learned, is 91. If you multiply this number by 13, if you multiply 13 by 7 by 13, it will become 91. If you're going to multiply top by 13, we must multiply the bottom by 13. If you multiply bottom by 13, we end up with 13 times 5, 13 times 5 is 65. So what we end up here, what we end up here is this. Okay, the, the last step that I'm going to show you is not necessary, it's, it's quite evident, 13 times 7 is 91, which was the whole point of doing it, and here we have 91 over x, and on the bottom here we have 13 times 5, which is 65, and since top is same as this side, these two tops are same, since the numerator on this side is same as the numerator on the, on the other side, the denominator must also be the same, hence, hence, it implies that x is equal to 65, hence, x must be 65, that's the answer. We were asked to find the value of x, it turns out x is 65. Let's do one more, shall we? Number 4. I can't believe I made a boo-boo. It does surprise me, do you understand? Number 4. Because just recently I made a claim that I'm infallible other than one time when I made a mistake which was that time when I made the statement that I'm infallible that don't don't go there 7 to 9 is to x to 63 Fallible. What does it mean to be fallible? I don't believe we covered it in our vocabulary lessons, but I'm going to check it nonetheless. Fallible means capable of making a mistake. Capable of making a mistake. Of course, everyone is fallible. No one is infallible. We have not learned it in our vocabulary videos. I'll make sure that I cover it in the near future. I was looking in the vocabulary words. We haven't covered it. Anyway, let's continue here. 7 to 9, 7 to 9 is to, is to x to 63, that's how it's read, which is, which means 7 over 9, 7 over 9 is to means equals x over 63. This is very straightforward, very simple question as a matter of fact. How can we convert 9 to 63? You have to know your tables. You must know your tables by heart. You must know all your tables 1 through 20 or at least, at least 1 through 12. At the very least, you must know your tables 1 through 12. And if you watch the videos in basic math, in the basic math, if you watch day 1 through 12, you will, you will learn your tables. It will help you memorize your tables. Basic math, day 1 through 12. Here, it's a simple matter of knowing your tables for 7, or table of 9. 9 7s are 63. 9 7s are 63. 9 7s are 63. How do we know that 9 sevens make 63? 9, 9 sevens are 63. How do we know that 9 sevens are 63? Because I know that 10 sevens, I know 10 sevens, I know 10 sevens, 10 sevens are 70. If I have 10 sevens, well that will be 70. If I have 10 sevens, that makes a 70. If 10 sevens make 70, then if you were to take away one seven from those from that group of ten sevens, the nine seven must be seventy minus seven. Seventy minus seven is sixty-three. Nine seven is sixty-three. Since we multiplied this side, since we multiplied the the bottom by seven, we must multiply the top by seven. There we go. We are done. Nine times seven is sixty-three, which is this guy right here, which is same as that guy, which means if the bottom is the same on both sides, the top must be the same. X has to equal. X has to equal. 7 times 7, 7 times 7 is 49. The answer is, the answer to this question is, x is equal to 49. From here, 7 times 7. 
Let's do the next one, number five. Number five. X to 15, X to 15 is to, is to 120, 120 to, wow, 225, bloody hell. 225, why do they have to give us such large numbers? Of course, it's a rhetorical question. It, not, it, do, it does not need to be answered. We know the answer, answer already, obviously. Why do they do that? Because their favorite activity is to be the pain, pain in our derriere. That's what they're there for. Let's, let's do it out, shall we? X to 15. X to 15. This is how it's read. X to 15 is to, let me put it in the capital letter so we can see it, is to, is to, that's how this thing is read, is to 120 to 225. That's how it's read. X to 15 is same as X over 15. Is to means equal 120 to 225. To 225. What can we do here? We have to get the X by itself. We have to get the X by itself. And how can we do that? It's very simple. If you want to get the X by itself, multiply both sides by 15, multiply this side by 15, multiply that side by 15. In other words, we bring the 15 from the bottom of this side to the top of that side. 15 goes away from it and X, X, equals, X equals this quantity right here that we see. X equals this quantity right here that we see. What can we do here? Well, very first thing we have to understand, if you know your tables of 15, and you could do it in a baby way, you could do, you can start dividing by 2 or 3 or 5, I'm just going to do it very fast, multiply top and bottom by 15, multiply top and bottom by 15, if you know your 15 stable. If you don't know your 15 stable, you're going to have to start the process with 5. Let's start the process with 5 just to keep it simple. How many, how many 5 does 15 have? 15 has 3 5s, 3 5s are 15. How many 5s does 2 have? 2 has no 5, 2 has no 5. That 2 goes and joins the 2 and becomes 22. That 2 goes and joins the 2 and becomes 22. How many 5's does 22 have? 22 has 4 5's, 4 5's are 20. 4 5's are 20. After we take away 20 from 22, we have a remainder of 2. That 2 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 25. And 25 has 5 5's. Voila. Let's divide top and bottom by 5 again. How many fives does 45 have? 45 has 9 five. 9 fives are 45 because 10 fives make 50. Since we divide the bottom by 5, we must divide the top by 5. Obviously, we can't divide that number by 5, so you're going to have to divide 120 by 5. How many fives does 1 have? 1 has no fives. 1 has no five. It's too puny. That one goes and joins the 2 and becomes 12. How many fives does 12 have? 12 has 2 fives. 2 fives are 10. 2 fives are 10. The remaining, re, remainder 2 goes and joins the 0 and becomes 20. And 20 has 4 fives. We are still not done. We are still not quite done. We see 3 on the bottom. We see 9. Uh, we see 3 on the top. We see 9 on the bottom. We have to, we have to keep reducing un, until, until we are all done. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. I'm going to change the color because it's too much red now. It's too much red. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. 3, three has 1 3 and 9 has 3 3. So that's done. We are still not done. We have, to, we have to get rid of this 3 from the bottom. We see 24, we see 3. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. If we divide 3 by 3, three it becomes 1. And 24 divided by 3 is 8. 8 3 is a 24. That's it. We are done. The answer is x equals 8 times 1. 8 times 1 is just 8. And in the bottom we have 1. 8 times 1, which is 8 divided by 1, is just 8. The answer is x equals to 8. x equals to 8. We'll continue this process tomorrow because otherwise the video will get too long. Tomorrow we'll do the next five questions that you see, the sample problems on the same page from 6 through 10. All right. And at that point we will have done, we will, we will, we will have been done uh, with this notion, this concept of ratios and proportions and we're going to move on to something new and exciting, new and improved. We're going to move on to the concept of percentages. 
on the big topic on the exam. And again, if you're not good with percentages, if you need help with concept of percentages, there are several videos you will find in a series of basic math which will teach you how to do how to do percentage problems. And there are videos I'm going to point out to you in the T series that deal with the notion of percentages, percent, the problems dealing with percentages that is. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.